So, can technological feasibility affect existing legal doctrines? Uh, uh, so, I guess one half of the audience will say, no, of course, yes. And the other half will say, no, of course, no. But uh, uh, anyway, so uh, this is the uh, joint work. Let me just make this little quickly. Let's do progress the slides. I think. Anybody has a clicker, maybe clickers could work, but okay. Oh, you see, okay, maybe this works. Okay, so, so it's, it's based actually on two works. Uh, uh, one uh, with uh, Ken Barbiger, Shafi Goldberg, Rebecca Richter, and Evan Zimmerman, uh, uh, which uh, uh, kind of roughly the first half of the talk. It's uh, in, in working with the original this year. And the other one is to be just a little bit of SRL with uh, Dorbitan, Chelsea University, and Rebecca Wexler again. And that's going to be roughly the second half of the talk. Um, okay. So uh, uh, let's start uh, with the story. Okay. So I think the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the top part of the story is this time. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it's a one case of verification. But let me start with the story. So, uh, so I think 2007 uh, uh, started the case of uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the federal criminal case uh, of the United States versus Budziak, uh, where uh, the uh, Budziak was charged with uh, distribution and, and, and holding of uh, of system, this uh, child uh, sexual abuse material. Which is illegal to uh, to have in any way or form in any jurisdiction for any particular device, except for one particular entity, which is what here. Uh, and uh, and the way they the uh, they, the uh, they collected the evidence, the FBI uh, uh, used some uh, uh, hidden investigation to some hidden software in order to see to figure out to download. Uh, 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 um, those uh, uh, the system files from uh, the computer. Then later they uh, uh, they, uh, they search, they found even more files. Uh, um, then uh, in the uh, uh, discovery uh, stage of the trial, which for the non law folks, you know, including myself, and 15 months ago, it means the stage before the actual trial, before the jury comes in, where the uh, prosecution stay, uh, 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 presents the evidence. And then the defense challenges the evidence to see if it's if it's applicable, uh, uh, correct or not. And that's uh, where much of the facts of the matter are being uh, uh, disclosed and discussed, and even before the trial starts. Uh, uh, that's actually where much of the uh, uh, happens. Um, so in that stage, the uh, the defendants uh, stated that uh, this couldn't have happened because. Uh, he definitely configured the files on his computer to be unshareable and whatever sharing system that they have ever used in order to uh, uh, to get uh, the files from his computer could not have been uh, right. And he uh, asked to see the software that FBI used in order to uh, 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 obtain the files. FBI said, no, we can't if we uh, disclose them or that even the, uh, the experts, even under whatever restrictions in fact that will compromise the, uh, the efficacy, uh, uh, their ongoing investigations, future investigations, you will not be able to catch criminal. Um, and uh, uh, eventually after some back and forth, the judge accepted this claim of the law of uh, enforcement. There's uh, actually a standard procedure uh, 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 in the court system for weighing these uh, 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 claims by law enforcement for the exceptional uh, uh, evidentiary uh, a privilege of uh, uh, enforcement. Uh, and in that case, the judge decided that it's acceptable uh, in order to proceed to trial without the uh, defendant seeing the actual uh, uh, software. Uh, the trial proceeded, the uh, defendant found guilty, he was sent to jail. Uh, uh, there was an appeal. And uh, in the appeal, the, uh, the Ninth Circuit Determined actually that uh, defendant should have been uh, uh, shown the uh, the evidence, the the, the software to, to inspect, and uh, reminded me sent it back to the lower court. Lower court actually uh, asked the FBI to uh, to produce the uh, the system, the uh, uh, 
to to uh, to show the software. At which point, one of us produced some uh, uh, statements from the uh, uh, the Ninth uh, Circuit uh, decision. Things are uh, uh, telling. Uh, uh, so I just we just read it. So a party seeking to impeach the reliability of a computer evidence should have a sufficient opportunity to ascertain by free trial discovery whether both the machine and the to supply the data uh, input and information have performed the task accurately. Uh, and then another quote says, it, it is quite incomprehensible that a prosecution should tender a witness uh, to state the results of computer's operations without having the programs of, available to defense scrutiny and use on cross, on cross examination if desired. Uh, and uh, uh, that was the, uh, the, the ruling of the Ninth uh, Circuit. And then, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it is, I don't know if it's uh, 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 relevant or not, but uh, in this case, what happened was the FBI were unable to locate the data, the software, and uh, the case was dismissed. The, the, the person was dismissed. Uh, um, okay, and okay, so that's one case. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to it. So that, okay, so in that particular case, the defense was yeah. Well, the the uh, well, there, there, there are a number of issues, but uh, uh, I'll get a bit more later. But no, it's just to answer the question. So apparently, there are two different uh, charges. One is is a holding of system, and another one is distribution of system. Very different uh, 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 with the consequences. The differences so that was about the distribution. The, the, he also had you know complaints about the 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 whatever the the the, the, the veracity of the entire thing, but we'll get to that later. I just I just want to give... yeah because they couldn't show the program right in that in that case there was no nothing there. So so it's true that they also found evidence later on his computer in the search, but also like you know this was the search order. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know what happened was the uh, yeah. So uh, uh, anyway, so so that's uh, but but let's let's, so let's move on because there, there there's many other cases. So I want to give a different flavors of. Uh, uh, but actually, please stop and ask me. Okay, so so uh, uh, another 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 area uh, of together. So uh, so target smart. Uh, uh, was uh, uh, was a lobbying company. Uh, uh, was approached by uh, 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 by uh, by another company. Uh, uh, good uh, health something. Good harbor uh, 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 products or something. I forget GHP. Uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, buy it, um, the uh, uh, in the process, targets were disclosed all kinds of proprietary software and data. Uh, 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 you know, database of, of people they, they were lobbying. Uh, and the idea, of course, but then soon after, turned out that GSP was actually just a front for another company, which was actually a competitor of uh, of uh, Target Smart Catalyst. They used it actually against Target Smart in the market. So Target Smart sued, and uh, and uh, uh, both GSP analysts. And as far as I checked, uh, 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 I did last night try to find litigation still going on, like several steps still. This so that this thing is still going on. Uh, um, okay, so uh, another setting. So there's a uh, regular reactions for those you can see at the top. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, so you know, the, uh, after the 2008 uh, financial uh, uh, crisis, uh, uh, one of the things that happened was this uh, Frank Act that instructed the Federal Reserve to uh, conduct a periodic stress tests to banks and financial institutions. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, those, the parameters of the tax are, are like uh, highly uh, sensitive. So they're kept secret by the Federal Reserve from the banks, of course, to keep the efficacy of the tax. And also there are many parameters the banks have to keep secret even from the Federal Reserve because of privacy of clients, uh, uh, customers. So there's a lot of secrets going on here uh, uh, and, and uh, in, in those stress tests, but it's happening every year. And of course, uh, it's pretty opaque to the public, or at least used to be done. Uh, um, 
So, so but that is what's happening. So to some foreseen, there was uh, this is going to argue that uh, uh, this lack of transparency actually caused uh, some unequal treatment. And there were some specific banks that the, the uh, uh, whistleblower uh, uh, identified as being kind of a two lakhs of uh, tests because they were close to the plate or whatever to the source. Uh, um, so as far as I know, no real action has happened from that particular uh, 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 whistleblower. But today, the parameters are more disclosed, you know, they are more openness, but it's still a lot that remains unknown about what's really going on here, only big parameters. Uh, um, so, uh, and really, uh, you know, the public is really kept in the dark from what's going on. Um, although, you remember the whole point of the, the DOPS Act and, and the, uh, was to prevent, you know, uh, this, uh, this situation of, you know, people close to the plate, you know, too big to fail and everybody pays the price. But anyway, so, so uh, that's another situation. Uh, uh, Another case, uh, uh, interesting case in Coca-Cola uh, bottling company, Coca-Cola, uh, in 1995, uh, because uh, in 1982, I think Coca-Cola started with Diet Coke and they uh, started uh, charging the bottling companies more for the syrup for the Diet Coke for the food. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the Coca-Cola bottling company says that no, we have an agreement on, on, on Coca-Cola and that actually uh, 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 goes further to cover the for two, and then the Coca-Cola said no, and, uh, and there was back and forth, and then uh, uh, the bottling company uh, wanted to see the formula for both to just to help it determine maybe uh, uh, whether, uh, uh, you know, whether it covers or not, uh, and, uh, and, and the court accepted the, uh, the claims of the Coca-Cola bottling company that their uh, so there was a, the balance here between the Coca-Cola uh, uh, rights or harms if they if the trade circuit were disclosed versus the harms of the bottling company where uh, you know it will be able to determine correctly uh, and the court decided in favor of the bottling company in which case the Coca-Cola company just settled in a very favorable terms in order to preferred not to reveal the secret but this way it's secret and um, today we don't know the formula of Coca-Cola or that so. Uh, so, so that's another case. Uh, um, so, so many more, but it's just this. Uh, there is a common theme going on here, right? Uh, uh, that the common wisdom is that uh, to, prove, to prove a point, you have to disclose information to prove your right, uh, uh, and to better convince, you have to disclose more information. Uh, uh, and uh, on the other hand, disclosing more information, you know, have some externalities, and then like exposes the disclosure to harms in other ways. And, and but the point is that this trade doping is in heaven, uh, uh, and that's life. And uh, in economics, it's called you know the R of the story we disclose the power of, so that if you want to sell something, you have to disclose what it is. And then once you disclose it, uh, 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 it loses value unless there is uh, you know IP protection. You know, in this case, you can't talk about this. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 kind of the basis for one foundations for uh, copyright and patent law, etc. So uh, I the value of that. So, so that's uh, how it looks in economics. Uh, um, you know, it's also it's accepted as uh, as a given, and the law sees itself as you know the way you know, judges the balance, the harms on both sides to see you know, so, so to get to the balance of harms. Uh, but see, it accepts this trend uh, uh, as a given. So, so the point of the tour is to challenge that wisdom, right? To say this is not a necessity, we can get around it, we can do better, right? Uh, so with the right technology, we can actually uh, 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 gain stuff and, you know, in, in the process of some, uh, 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 of some hidden data uh, uh, without exposing the data itself. And uh, 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 this gives a kind of a rich, like a much richer, uh, a broader uh, solution space to explore rather than just decide you know, whether to explore or not explore, to disclose or not. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, so this is the uh, so this is the point of the tool, and uh, uh, and the main tool that we are uh, using here uh, is uh, uh, is this zero knowledge proofs, uh, which this cryptographic uh, protocol is just a cryptographic protocol or idea. Uh, 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 by going back to the Italian so I can say for myself that uh, uh, this is probably the one thing that got me to work in cryptography. This one uh, paper, this idea is how I'm around it. 
among other things, but it's just my personal view. But uh, anyway, so, uh, but it is not the best So what are these, these zero knowledge protocols, right? So let me give you, uh, try to give you an example or an illustration, you know, non-technologies, right? Uh, uh, so, so this is an example, actually, it's, it's a story, the story from, there's a book by uh, Ronnie Turn Free. Uh, uh, oh, you don't see it, it's at the top of the slide. Uh, uh, um, because in fact, it's good for this kind of thing. Do you see anything? Well, you can read it, great. Uh, 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 so there's kind of like a beautiful proof. Uh, and there, there, there's, so there, there's, there's this proof here, so there's a, this following idea. Uh, so assume, you know, there's a um, picture and a friend walking around in the forest on a stroll in the afternoon. And then the friend says, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 actually, I, I learned some trick. I know how to take one look in the tree. I know exactly how many leaves are on those trees. You know, uh, uh, you know, I just get trained. You know, I got this Google Glass or something. You know, I can see exactly how many leaves are on that tree. And the mathematician says, uh, "Yeah, really? Uh, uh, how do you, you remember? How, uh, you know, he doesn't trust you. So, so what can the kind of mathematician do in order to verify that the friend really can count?" Leaves on, on trees. So uh, so here's here's a trick, right? What the mathematician can do, can, you know, so how many leaves are on that tree there? Okay. And they, they, you know, the friend says, oh, you know, 145,679. So so, uh, so what the mathematician can do there? So, okay, so here's a trick. Just grabs and picks a random uh, a bunch of leaves uh, in, the, in the farm, hides it, and he asks, you know, so 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 how many leaves are there now? Uh, uh, right, and if the uh, uh, different really can count, they would actually say, you know, uh, so you know, in that case, you would say 145, 650. But now the, the mathematician can check, right? You can count the number of leaves in the hand and check that really the difference is right. So, uh, uh, so that's a great kind of interactive proof that you can actually challenge. Apparently, you have no idea uh, how to do it, but you know, but you, uh, uh, but you can check. That's great, but that's a proof, right? That's a way to prove, to, to verify something without actually being able to do it yourself. Uh, 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 nice, but what is uh, your knowledge? What about your knowledge? So the question about the, what is the proof of your knowledge? Right? So, uh, so, so how do we do that? So, so now you know, the same thing, you know, uh, 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 I take one look and I see how many leaves are in the tree. Uh, uh, and the uh, the guy says, uh, "Yeah, so let's how many leaves are that tree?" But uh, uh, but now the, the friend doesn't want to tell how many leaves that tree because we want to keep this hidden, right? So now we have this uh, extra restrictions that uh, the the prover wants to make sure that the verifier doesn't learn anything from this process, right? Or doesn't learn uh, number leaves on the tree. So uh, so what can we do here, right? So what the mathematician said, "Oh, I won't tell you." I still remember, I count and I remember, but I won't tell you how much, right? Uh, 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 and then the, the, uh, the, the mathematician can continue, start to pick the number of, you know, uh, random leaves and ask, you know, so how many now? Uh, uh, the, uh, and now the, uh, the friends can, you know, count again, but now we just tell uh, the difference, right? You can say, you know, this is how many uh, leaves you have in your hand, right? I know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how many leaves on the screen, but I can predict how many you have in your hand, right? And the, the friend can just count and get verified just the same way. And, and the same uh, idea, you know, the same reasoning would say that, okay, now the friend gets convinced that the, uh, the you know, sorry, the mathematician gets convinced that the friend can count leaves of trees, but, the, uh, but, but now the mathematician has learned nothing from the process, right? So how do we say that he learned nothing from the process? So a way of saying it is saying that, you know, whatever the, the mathematician has learned from interacting with the friend, could have done himself. Right? You could even just go by yourself with other friend, pick a random number of leaves on a tree and count them, right? That's all he learned, right? Uh, 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 so, so this is the idea of, of your knowledge, right? So, so this is a very simple idea, but it really gets to the core of what's your knowledge, what's a proof and what's your knowledge, right? So you, you, you prove something, but you, but you hide everything else, right? Uh, um, so, okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there was actually most of it. Uh, uh, the original proof was a lot of the other that I was telling you to my 17-year-old daughter, just for fun, and just 
point is cut, uh, finish point is important, but how you do this? And this was what she said, I did not. Anyway, so, uh, so, uh, um, so, so how, how do you make it uh, uh, more concrete? How do you make it uh, uh, the zero knowledge design by the truth about it's encrypted? Uh, zero knowledge from, from, from digital information, how to make it from information. So the setting here is the following. So, so we have a, a, a prover, uh, uh, which has some public data, now it's data, uh, 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 D, and some associated secret data S, right? So that's it's, it's the prover. And we have a verifier that has uh, the same public data D, and the verifier wants to verify that the prover has some, uh, has a uh, secret data S, sorry, it should be S, not either, uh, uh, such that, uh, uh, well, and what I want here is C of S and D is what? What is C? C is some check problem. Some check, you know, I want to check something. Some property of uh, uh, D and S together. And I want to check that this is a uh, hoax, right? Uh, uh, so I'm just thinking of, of the C as a, you say, computer program that takes the input uh, uh, S and D and checks something. So for instance, you know, for the mathematician, computer scientist uh, among us, uh, the first thing we're going to think about is that uh, uh, what is uh, going to be? So, this is the, so the secret here is going to be two large prime numbers, number P and Q, and, and, and this is going to be the product of them. And, and, and we know that uh, uh, given D, there's only one way to split D into this P and Q, but finding this P and Q is really hard, nobody knows how to do it with this large. Uh, uh, that's the basics of uh, whatever the digital economy is, essentially. To the on the internet, but uh, uh, the the uh, uh, so what what the prover can do can 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 give D and prove to the uh, uh, to the verifier that it knows that it has P and Q such that if you multiply them then you get this D, but but, but the verifier will not learn P or Q or anything else for the matter except for the very fact that you know those two exist and the prover knows. Them. Okay, so that's one example. And another example, just you know. So what if uh, uh, um, uh, uh, D, the public data is gonna be some ciphertext that maybe the, uh, the prover got on the, on, on the, on the network and you know, the, uh, the verifier is going to do something. And, uh, uh, and now the verifier going to say, you know, show me what this decrypts to. And I want to see that uh, it doesn't mention bad names. Uh, uh, and now the, the, the prover which has the decryption key it knows the, the, the descriptive message and can actually prove to law enforcement that you know there exists KNM or it has KNM such that this ciphertext, if using TK, the clips to message M and M never mentions it was uh, or something else, right? Uh, and, and nothing else. The law enforcement is satisfied, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, th th that message does not mention those bad names, but. Nothing else. You can say do it uh, other things, right? So, so you can say again. I can kind of premeditate uh, uh, this D. So I start with uh, uh, with uh, uh, S. So 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 let's assume, let's assume that uh, 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 S is uh, uh, some uh, uh, you know so uh, uh, like in an auction a limit in an auction, uh, uh, and I don't want to uh, to to uh, reserve price or something. I don't want to disclose it. So I just uh, disclosed the uh, 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 small units with the hash attached, and and then the public data is going to be uh, so this is going to be this hash attached with some value z, and then the statement will be you know below this you run this sort of reserve price stuff from the end of the day, but I don't going to tell you what's the reserve price. I just prove to you that uh, you you bid was too low, right? Uh, uh, and you know, again, you can do many other things like that. Um, so, anyway, so let me go forward. Okay. Uh, maybe okay. Jump to the uh, um, 
by his uh, servant. No, oh, no, sorry, sorry. That's not sorry. Uh, tell you who is he. Um, okay, that's what we learn. Um, okay, so, um, ooh. Okay, okay, so, so, so more specifically, so what is a general proof? It's a, it's a, what you call a protocol or a pair of programs, uh, 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 such, you know, the program for the prover and a program for the verifier. And the prover gets, uh, you know, the, the secret data, the public data D and this check program C and the verifier just gets, the verifier program gets uh, the public data D and the, and the uh, check program, uh, uh, program and the, Exchange messages, the general message is there, and in the end, the verifier says, you know, accept, reject, yes or no. And, and the properties that we have from this protocol, so the world is not a specific protocol, it's a classic protocol, it's a measure. Uh, uh, but uh, all those are those protocols, what is super satisfied is that really, if, uh, uh, you know, really the prover says the truth and the verifier runs the code, then the verifier will accept, you know, that's just to make it the meaningful. And then uh, the, the important thing for the verifier is that if the verifier accepts, that means that actually, that's not true, uh, uh, not true, sorry. Uh, uh, um, the if the verifier accepts, that means that actually there is a secret data that satisfies the, uh, the requirement. So that's the whole point. And then there's the zero knowledge property, which says that what we said earlier, that whatever the verifier could have learned, even if they did something else uh, other than the model was supposed to do, uh, 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 could have been, they, they could have done it on their own. They, they, they didn't need to talk to the prover, and this is the mathematical way of saying it, never mind. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so these are the properties. Um, so we have uh, another, I just talk about two other variants of your knowledge, which is going to be good to know. Uh, um, is uh, one is that uh, it's, it, it's uh, what's called non interactive zero knowledge. So, so, so now, the, the, instead of just the parties talking to each other back and forth, there's only one message from the prover to the verifier. And the verifier, the only thing has to do is just check this message you know, with this code, which actually has a very nice property that uh, uh, now, since the, there's no interaction, this proof can be actually written in a book or in a, a record somewhere and can be checked publicly by anybody anytime. So it's completely publicly verifiable as opposed to the previous case where essentially it was just the prescribed verifier could have, you know, could have verified after interacting. Right? So, uh, so you, like remember in our tree, uh, uh, in our uh, leaf story, you know, if somebody came after the fact and uh, any one of the two told them what happened, they have no reason to believe this is really what happened. You have to be there and, and grab the leaves and copy it yourself and see the other person doesn't see it and they guess it in order to actually get convinced that they know what they're doing, right? So you have to be there at the time. And this is different. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, another thing that's actually very useful for court system if you, you know, if you imagine. And uh, there's other cases you can actually break through with, you know, there are cases like in, uh, uh, straight secret litigation, where maybe the secret is uh, this party has a secret, the other party has a secret, and you want to verify something on the two secrets, and the people are telling the process, and you want to show the secret. You can actually do it. You can actually have a proof that, say, the court can verify uh, where the, the, the secret is split between two parts. And all these things can be done. Uh, uh, um, so, uh, in what's the state of the art in the, in, in the, in the crypto world? So essentially, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, it's not less amazing than the first paper that, uh, that, that put forth the concept. There was uh, the students of you know, the second paper and, and others that actually showed that it's not just a curiosity for tree uh, account, for leaf counting. Actually, can any program, any, any whatsoever can be 
checked, any check program can be implemented in zero knowledge, and which is pretty amazing uh, uh, result if you think about it. Uh, uh, and uh, but uh, it is true. Um, of course, there are some other, you know, mathematical assumptions that you nobody know, knows proved yet. But assuming that they're true, this is works. If they're not true, then we have bigger problems. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and but, but this first paper that only show like theoretical feasibility, nothing that we can actually implement and run. Uh, uh, and over the years, uh, 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 there have been many better implementations, making things uh, more efficient for specific uh, 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 statements or check programs and even for general ones, uh, and making things shorter and even easier to verify. Uh, and then even, even some real world implementations seem to be very uh, involved with. Uh, 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 mainly today, they've been used in reality, you know, in the context of cryptocurrency and, and anonymous credentials, which is uh, 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 been used some places in Europe. Uh, 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 the ideas we use, but not too much, even though the technology is pretty right. And uh, we try to explore new avenues. Right? So, okay, so we have all this set up. So, so, so now, how can some of those proofs can, can resolve verification dilemma? So, uh, uh, so, the crypto theoretician answer with one liner, you know, has the, you know, who that statement, whatever statement he had is your knowledge and become right? And, and uh, uh, there used to be a time that you know, people were stuck up in the center and, and, and moved on in our theoretical endeavors. But, uh, but, but actually, you know, if you want to actually do it, there's a lot to, to do there, and it's essentially what we're trying to do, right? So first you have to get the idea across to people who actually are supposed to use it. Uh, 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 legal audience, which are, you know, highly sophisticated, very smart people, but they're not, you know, technological. So one has to, uh, 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 to explain this to them and, uh, in, you know, the, what it does, what it doesn't do. Uh, uh, and then you have to really try to understand to see how it's actually going to be done, right? So, so what, what is the public input? The witness is the secret. What is this uh, relation of the check program? And who decides and how this uh, thing gets processed, right? And, and, and another thing is how to connect, you know, it's always like there's an issue here, how to connect the digital information in, in those mathematical tools with the real world things that happen. There's always this question, and it's a case by case uh, uh, answer, but one has to be answered at some point. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, um, so anyways, so, so the, the, the another challenge here is the fact that, you know, you have to decide ahead of time before you see the data, what it is that you want to check on the data. Right? And in many cases, in some cases it's obvious, right? We know exactly what you want to check. Some cases, the normal way mode of operation, we don't really know, right? We just say, let's see the data and then check, right? You want to see all kinds of things. Here, you cannot do that. You have to first decide, you know, close your eyes, mental experiment, okay, now I have the data, what would I check first? And then would I check second, you know, the, the, the decision tree? Know, the text, and then you have to figure out in advance, and then you have to put it on, on, on the table, on paper, and this you code, that's your check problem, right? So sometimes it works, sometimes it's harder, but we have to give, uh, um, and of course, we have to incorporate in the legal process to get, you know, the legal hoops to, to what's actually done in, in, in the answer. Okay, so, so, um, so still, but I think that they were, the point is there is a great promise here uh, on, how, on how this could affect I think uh, the legal uh, uh, situation. So we can make, definitely can make law more efficient in places that uh, law goes to great lengths to, uh, uh, to do things in, in a different way. It can actually make it more, more efficient in terms of process. Uh, uh, and also it will go to kind of things the outcome of the process. So, so we get greater privacy for people, greater accountability, uh, 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 and, and, and again, these are not now contradictory anymore. We can actually maximize both, right? So we can, right? Uh, uh, and, and we're going to allow really for, for, for much more nimble or fine grained uh, re in many the regulatory decisions uh, about uh, things that before we didn't even think that we might be able to do because everything is secret. And, you know, so we no no good point to think about. Now we can actually keep things secret and hold them accountable. So we can start thinking about it. Um, and, uh, and of course, there's, there's a new thing on how to design technology together with the law. And maybe that's what you know, goes there. 
But, but just to uh, uh, remember that there is, you know, it's not a panacea. So, so, so the title here is, you know, where should zero knowledge not be used? Uh, uh, and, and keep it always in mind. So definitely it should not be used as a substitute for disclosing something that should be disclosed in the first place, right? And, and there are many places that, in fact, there are a ton of examples of you were trying to go to when you're doing these our endeavors, and you said, that, no, no, that's not the analyst. This would be like, for instance, all these questions about, you know, the, uh, whatever, the, uh, the prediction tools for uh, uh, recidivism, right? So the, those companies are saying, you know, these tools are proprietary, you cannot tell me what they are, so and put things with your knowledge. No, 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 no. This is something that you want to actually disclose. You know, so it is, no, it's, it's about the decision, but if you think this is going to be the case, then no zero knowledge. There are things that you should disclose, right? And uh, not things about the uh, um, Or maybe there should be a discussion about it, but uh, one should do it because. Uh, uh, but, uh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. No, no, so that's it. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, um, so, so, yeah. <laughs> it's just the right question. So, 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 anyway, so, 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 so. So definitely situations when you really need to eyeball data because this is something that you don't trust, you don't need to trust, you don't want to trust, you want to check uh, 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 for, I you know, I know and unknowns, uh, uh, for uh, uh, um, all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, or maybe other things, you know, there's some, you know, formative irregularities, maybe the data is not represented well, you know, it's white, it's unwritten, it's ambiguous. So, so there's cases where it will be hard to use your knowledge, right? So, uh, uh, and also undesired to use your knowledge, we should keep it in mind. But uh, that said, there's still a lot of problems here. So, so what we saw like in the first work that I discussed, the one that uh, in the uh, uh, Learning technology is, is, is uh, uh, like an exploration of how your knowledge might apply to different cases, uh, the uh, areas in law, so uh, privacy law, uh, uh, it's really the issue of separating the replication of data or identity from full disclosure or identification. Uh, 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 and then law like uh, the stress testing, uh, 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 when you want to go oversight and you want to keep uh, 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 the government accountable or you know, a balance of uh, uh, good and bad. And, uh, um, and, uh, and at the same time, you know, keep uh, the, the tools uh, secret. And also, in the other way around, when you want the, the government wants people to disclose information to it, like in, in, in regulation, uh, you know, in tax reports, right? Uh, uh, you know, you can actually put things to the government without disclosing things to the government. Uh, uh, in deal making, uh, like we discussed earlier, the acquisition, the merger, in trade secret information. Uh, and in criminal law, right? So, so, so what I'm going to talk for the rest of today is, is on, the, on, on the last bullet, and this is where uh, we did further work to actually try to make it more complete and actually something that is closer to what. Uh, um, okay, so, so let me go there. Uh, um, so, so we, we, we just remind me what you're talking about the hidden investigative software problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, this, on top of everything, there's no control. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. It's too easy. Okay. Right here, yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so what is it? So, so let me, that's just the first slide. We started with, you remember the Buzi Act, uh, uh, and so let me do it again more slowly and, and continue with that. Uh, um, so, you know, that, you know, unfortunately, some people use the internet to do legal activities. Right, and law enforcement is trying to catch them, uh, 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 target them and catch them. And uh, 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 in this particular case, as we described, you know, so, so there was uh, 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 some connection made by law enforcement and, 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 and a suspect, uh, uh, and uh, uh, law enforcement managed to get some, you know, the suspect to, to, to send uh, 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 the system on, on for big advice to law enforcement. Uh, uh, and then, oops, uh, 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 and then, and then, that was uh, indicted. The person that is the indictment goes to trial, right? Um, and uh, and then at the uh, uh, and then the trial, uh, the things you know, the the defendant has the right to ask things. So, so, so you know, 
Okay, so as it says, I, I, I want to see the software, I don't trust it, I don't believe that. And uh, the government says, no, no, I trust you, and didn't, you can't. And besides trust me, he is an assured of it by a law enforcement person. Uh, I, it's been working fine, you know, I know what I'm doing, it, it's fine. Uh, um, and, uh, but, you know, but then the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the defendants, you know, mounts the claims, you know, has to definitely in this uh, 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 discovery process in order to have a claim to see evidence or, or information, you have to show that it's relevant. So, so I don't uh, trust you, I don't know if it's relevant or not, and, and your software is buggy or maybe buggy, it must be buggy because I didn't do it, but you said I did. Uh, uh, and uh, actually search my private file without uh, authority. Uh, uh, and besides, you, you know, you you change my PC settings, and and and, uh, uh, and 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 you know you put a virus in my PC, and and, and uh, you suffer, you know, I don't trust. You. And uh, um, and what do you do? So on the one hand, you know, the defendant has the right to do this, right? So this is like the premise of the legal system, right? That you know, especially you know, even in other countries where you know the judge wrote to to investigate, but definitely in the legal US legal system where it's an adversarial system where the prosecution right uh, role is to find evidence of guilt, and the only entity whose goal is to find evidence of innocence is the defendant. The defendant definitely has the right to check all evidence all the way around the evidence of guilt, right? uh, 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 no matter what. Otherwise, you know, you know the truth is, is kind of, it's the basis of the truth-seeking truth process. Right? Uh, um, on the other hand, there's law enforcement, uh, which has this uh, evidentiary privilege for good reason, because it's public interest to help law enforcement catch criminals, so you want to keep those tools uh, effective, right? And maybe that's an answer to your question. If there is public, you know, you know we can argue, but uh, uh, in principle, there is, uh, I think there is public interest in keeping those tools secret at some point or another. Maybe not in every specific case, but in general, the other is, you know, because we, you know, we want to keep, you know, to keep, to catch criminals and keep us safe. Uh, uh, so there's definitely a two uh, competing uh, 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 issues here. And this is actually articulated very nicely by a judge in another case that Jim talked about, but in the same area, same in both parts of cases. So, so I just need to say, what should be done about it when under this fact, the defense has a justifiable need for information in the hands of the government, but the government has a justifiable right not to turn the information over to the defense, right? So, uh, uh, and you know, and the just what do you want them to do, right? Uh, uh, so, and which is, you know, what do you want them to do? And uh, um, so, so, in the cases, there are kind of like three options uh, over, you know, the, the, the cases have been going, right? So, one option is to order disclosure of the person, right? And then, uh, uh, well, you either you risk, uh, or, but, but you, the defense now has, you know, got the right get, get to check, but then you risk damaging the efficacy of, 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 of the software, right? And, uh, uh, and, or alternatively, law enforcement will refuse to disclose, in which case, the case is dismissed, and the person might well be uh, a criminal, goes back to whatever, to society, and, and continues doing what they're doing, right? So, so that's, uh, 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 that's not great. Uh, the other station is actually not to disclose the uh, uh, and then uh, uh, and, and then you know maybe as the innocent person goes to uh, to, to, uh, to to jail. But I think more globally, more there is a more systemic damage here. There is the lack of the erosion of trust in the legal system, right? By everybody, not just the right? uh, 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 And there's this uh, uh, this uh, there is a uh, 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 famous quote from. Uh, uh, Supreme Court justice, you know, so what, what will happen is the police and staff conclusively determines the validity of their own rights. And if you deal with that. Uh, uh, so, so that's the second one. So the third one that has been uh, happening uh, uh, is that, you know, there's some compromise. It's still just like a good thing in principle that, you know, you, you draw an independent expert. Uh, uh, but this turns out to not be good also. We'll see more examples about details in a minute, but uh, 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 it's really hard to find an expert that both parties trust in this particular case. Uh, and the law enforcement trusts to show them this, you know, the sensitive information and the, the defense uh, trusts to actually give the right assessment. And we'll see in a minute the case where it broke very nice, not, 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 not nicely. 
So the question is, can Zion know chop here? And we, we show that, that it can in, in a specific setting that we found more margin, margin that job. Okay, so 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 let's let's see if we run the case. So so the, the title here is the counterpoint to boot up with the first case. Uh, uh, this is another case, uh, kind of similar facts to begin with, similarly, but but very different outcome. Uh, 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 so that's the state versus Clements seven years later. So, so here, uh, uh, Senti, uh, 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 network is still more and more data by using Linux. Now the FBI took the software in his uh, 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 house, but instead uh, uh, procured the software from an external vendor uh, uh, and uh, uh, under license, whatever. Um, and which kind of makes you know, life harder for defense because now there's the, the IP right of, yeah, of, of the vendor. Also, you know, whatever, the uh, the vendor has less uh, 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 obligation to check correctness, whatever, than law enforcement, you know, but that's what I maybe said it here. Um, and, uh, and here in that case, actually, the, uh, as opposed to the previous one, the downloaded file through the system was the only evidence of guilt uh, 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 for, for indictment. Uh, um, and uh, but here, after this back and forth, uh, uh, the the uh, the actually the party was agreed on, on this compromise to go to 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 an expert witness, uh, uh, third party expert witness, uh, um, and uh, and the limit was the uh, they actually agreed on uh, uh, three questions, specific questions, which we we'll get there in a minute. Uh, uh, that the 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 yes no questions the expert should should answer. And the expert should have should see the source code and the executable. Uh, uh, eventually, the expert uh, uh, only got to see the source code executable was not given to 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 him for whatever reason. So of course, we didn't trust whatever. Uh, uh, still, the expert uh, drove the conclusion and, and actually decided that the uh, law enforcement uh, are not questions. Uh, in which case, the defense uh, uh, actually filed another objection and said that. First, uh, 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 actually, a verdict and it's pretty, technically pretty well reason said that the expert could not possibly have come up to this conclusion without having seen the, uh, 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 the tested the, the actual one in code uh, and all its based on source. And the second, you know, even given the evidence that the expert said, the opposite conclusion should have been reached. Uh, but at this point, the judge probably had enough and just moved on to, just said, let's move on to trial. Which, of course, as 90% of this case happened, there was no trial actually, but there was a plea bargain, whatever. And the, you know, uh, uh, the, the that particular case, the plea bargain was that he was not, uh, uh, they, they dropped the, the charge for uh, 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 holding uh, uh, um, whatever CSAM, but they kept the charge of distributing. But whatever. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, um, um, Okay, so so so, but so let's go. Let's let a little bit of what's going on here. So, what's this peer-to-peer -peer software? Uh, uh, so, so the software for people to use this to share files uh, 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 um, directly over the internet without any central server. And, and the idea is that you know, the large files talk about movies, pictures, etc. The files are split among multiple users. So, so we either you know, you know, no single user keeps the entire file until. You know, unless they're watching it, uh, uh, and users in order to download uh, files, they collect the pieces from different uh, networks of, of, of the network, and they're still going locally uh, uh, watch. Uh, and uh, and well, this is uh, lots of uh, good, uh, you know, risky pilots from technological point of view. It's for us. It's for digital network resources. Uh, and it, it also enhances privacy. You know, good for. Uh, against uh, uh, censorship, etc. Uh, but unfortunately, it's also very conducive and used, used a lot for sharing uh, system files, and uh, uh, and therefore learn, learn that takes for law enforcement to investigate uh, uh, and, and to catch people uh, are sharing system. And uh, uh, so the point is that law enforcement has a problem. You cannot just you know sign on to the network and, and, and get files to somebody. And then show that they, they are there to share because the sides are shared or split, and it's uh, the law enforcement actually needs to say, I got the entire thing from somebody in order to 
phases actually hold the file and whatever really knowingly distributed the most whatever. Uh, 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 so what do we do? So uh, uh, they, uh, they actually use a modified version of the software so that actually kind of like uh, tricks uh, uh, other computers that actually use the software as it is in order to send them all the shares of the specific file that's actually happening. Right? Uh, because the point when you download it, watch it, uh, you actually have all the shares, right? Because what you get, and if you're asked at the right moment before you delete them, then the protocol says, you know, and that's what, uh, but what I'm saying is conjecture because nobody knows exactly, but that's, well, that's, uh, that's how I would do it if I were to try to do it. Uh, um, anyway, so, so, uh, uh, so, but anyway, so that's uh, that situation, and then. Uh, uh, then in, in court now, so some law enforcement doing that. Now you want to to, to use your knowledge in order to prove in in, uh, in the court that you software was doing the right thing. But the question is, what is the right thing? So let's try to see what it is that, that, that those cases were referred to one of the uh, So what's the challenges posed in, in actually those two cases, in Act and in and, and, and Clemens, in other cases too. So, so the technical question is essentially, if you look at it, there are two types of technical questions, right? The first is the, is the, did the software really get all the pieces from, of a file from that computer as they say, or maybe you only got some of it and then maybe they got some from others. So there are all kinds of nuances of why exactly that would have happened, but that's, that's one of the questions uh, that we think. So another question, the other question that we think, uh, 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 can you know? Can it be that the software, that the the government software, has actually turned on the sharing bits for the files that I turned that I uh, set to not share? And this is a completely imaginary because such uh, uh, hacking tools exist actually, not for law enforcement, but for other reasons. They're documented. They you know they exist. You know, because apparently those companies they they you know they, they would like to uh, those sharing uh, systems that would like to. To, to uh, raise participation by people, right? Because if nobody shares anything, it's, there's no value. So that's a way to get people to share information. But uh, uh, whether they like it or not, but never mind. These things exist, and, and you know, and defendants say, you know, I didn't do it. I uh, I definitely put it in not share, and now you say you shared it. Maybe your software turned it off by, by itself. Right? Could be right. So so uh, uh, so that's the technical question. Another thing is the question, you know, how this question to translate to legalese. So, so, so these are the let me give you these are the questions that were given, ask the the, the you know the independent expert that I said in the, the feminist case that the guys agreed on. So so I mean, we, let's not go too in detail, but but we were at a very high level. Did law enforcement was a certain in true form, right? Law enforcement software does not exploit a vulnerability in any software. You know, it's a very broad thing. You know, the very fact that you uh, 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 manage to trick the, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer thing to actually give you all the shares of the file already is the hacking of the software. It's the answer is all, already known there. Right? Uh, but, uh, but never mind. Uh, 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 and you know, does not the software does not misuse the protocols in the network to do things that it does not intend to do. Again, of course, kids know, but uh, uh, because. It, it, that's what it's doing, right? It, uh, the, the protocol does not. Uh, did not agree with that. Yes. Exactly, yeah. And exactly that was the, the defense uh, uh, claim, you know, so, so how, you know, how come? Yeah, you know, right? uh, 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 uh. but in the process, it's already after uh, uh, the judge said enough, you know, was, you know, there's the expert, he said yes, no, you know, I don't know, maybe, uh, uh, et cetera, whatever. So, so, uh, you know, the point is that there's a, you know, there's some developments in translation. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, so again, so, 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 so when you want to say, let's do it, okay, let's do it with the very So, so, so again, so we said, okay, let's, uh, so how are we going to use the uh, 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 zero knowledge? Let's talk about a uh, 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 legal workflow. That's what's written there. Uh, like a four step legal uh, workflow for using the analytics in such a court case. Right. Uh, um, so, uh, um, so, again, this, uh, uh, we use the analytics proof. Again, you don't see it. At the end, so we have a four step uh, 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 process. Right? So, the starting point is uh, uh, those claims. 
that's related to some secret object X. So uh, for the this X was the secret S from before. So this X is the S from before. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so, so in our case, we're gonna talk about X, which is uh, 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 the, the software, this hidden software. And we think of it as X file because we're talking about source code. Right. So this is one reason why this, this was the case, which was we saw those lines where we can give the source code. Uh, uh, and the main idea is to do the following, right? So, 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 so first, you, you start uh, 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 with this check program that keeps the text of software. And, and, and the idea is to, uh, 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 for whatever, that's uh, 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 again, speaking there. So the check program now, the check program only talks about the uh, 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 the software itself or the hidden secret itself. Uh, um, and then you write uh, this check program in, in, in a language which is turned into ZKP, but don't write ZK, ZK proof, you know, uh, 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 you know what I mean. And, uh, uh, and, and this is the check program. And then, and then once you do that, uh, 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 you, the first step you do is to commit to the program. What that means is commit is, is a cryptographic term, uh, uh, which means that uh, 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 you, uh, uh, you hash the program. This is your secret program X. You add some manuals, you hash it, you now get the theme, which is the public data that you post. This is the, my program in the box, right? Uh, uh, this is to fix the other program. And then uh, um, the next step is again you you uh, uh, um, you, you you have your initial uh, uh, check program uh, C, and 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 the uh, and the R. What he says is the law enforcement when they have the indictment already at that point they have the uh, uh, the D out there public uh, 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 the program and. And this is the C that we propose. This is the checks that we propose to prove on our program, right? And this C has to be designed. Uh, 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 you have to think, the other person has to think how to design C. It says that on the one hand, it will actually give uh, uh, the right uh, assurance to, to uh, prospective defense. You know, this is what it means for the problem to, know, to do the right thing. Uh, uh, and on the other hand, you know, to reduce too much information and about what the problem actually does or essentially information that we don't want to look to. Them. But anyway, so that's something that law enforcement should do, and that's uh, part of the indictment. Right? Uh, um, and then, uh, right, so the C says that the, the claims are true, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and again, the C does not provide the truth. Right? And then, uh, uh, you know, we just uh, uh, emerge into the, the, the usual adversarial process of the of uh, 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 disclosure. And the defense uh, 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 expert checks the program. The program is this enough for me? You know, I'm happy with it. Or if not, then maybe uh, uh, I want another scheme. And I learn for the degree. Yes. If not, then they go and do the for Israel. Again, that's the same process, but now it's a much more fine grained process of decide what exactly you're talking to. Check for C rather than then disclose or not disclose, right? Uh, uh, so this is the first of taking the three, the three uh, assertions, but then now they're going to be. Mathematical assertions, not uh, uh, high level big assertions. Right? Uh, uh, and once this is agreed, then you actually do it, right? You actually run it and you give them the truth and the case continues, right? So, so this would be kind of the flow or the workflow of using the knowledge proof in, this, in the context. Uh, um, okay, so, and again, you know, this is in the point, but what happens if you say, what about, you know, this, uh, uh, there was this vendor who actually sold this program to law enforcement. So, okay, same thing can happen at procurement time, right? The law enforcement can ask the vendor to prove to it if, if the vendor doesn't want to disclose the source code, you know, that this is doing the right thing, right? And then the law enforcement can have the proof. And if it's publicly verifiable, they can just write it or publish it or something, and then later it can be, uh, uh, be given to the court. Uh, um, so, um, so the question is again, so how, how to build those check programs? Right, and this is like the rest of the work that we did is actually to uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to see to show you that it can be done, uh, uh, and we did it kind of on a course. Uh, so uh, uh, Mm 
Sweet. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, uh, it's it's so big, but let's be we did we did something. Let me show you what we did. No, but that's a very good point. Right? So so what I'm gonna say exactly uh, uh, so, so so how do we check the So we want to check, so what we want to do is uh, going back to those two points that I said I wrote earlier, for example. I want to check that the the program, the two things I want to verify is whatever the, the technical questions of the two cases is first that the, the program actually uh, uh, got all the questions of the same file from source, right? And the second one that it didn't do, you know, uh, um, funny things to the, to, the, to the target computer, right? So what I'm gonna prove is that, I hope it's written here in the thing, you know, so, so you're yeah, saving me for that. Uh, so what I'm gonna prove is something that I erased before and I'm not doing it. Uh, so what I wanna prove is that the program is only sending messages which are legal messages of the, the, the file sharing program. Each message individually is a legal syntactically you know, formulated message of the file sharing program. And that's the only interaction with the target computer. You know, there's only messages, uh, like, you know, TCP IP uh, packets that contain messages that go to that particular application. And uh, one of uh, each, each of those programs, is the, the, there's a set menu of programs, and it's, it's, it's one of those problems, queries in the menu. That's all I'm doing, right? Right, so, so okay. But uh, it, again, it's a great question. So this is a statement about the operation of the program. And, but I am not running it. I'm just taking the source code, but how can I do that, right? So, and, 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 and as you and Adam was implying also, this is the hard thing to do. How can you see from, from you know, it's very hard to see from, from the source description of the program exactly say the things about, about, the, state, about, about the operation, right? So, uh, uh, so what we did, okay, we we'll say, let's make a lot of this, right? Uh, let's not try to give a foolproof uh, uh, guarantee of that. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to do the following. We're going to see, we're going to, we're going to assume that, or so assume we require the program, if one wants to use the program, we want this program to be written in, in this, the following format. Uh, 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 there's going to be uh, uh, two, uh, uh, two, the two parts of the program. There is a, a core component, because whatever, and there is another component, it's going to attack a wrap around it for a communicator, and that communicator, is the only component of the program which can have sent uh, uh, messages to whatever you know, to the outside world to get information to the outside world, right? And that communicator is something that we wrote. You know, so it's, it's a fixed program that uh, 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 we write, and it's public, it's not secret. And, but all this, all this communicator does is make sure that all the packets that are sent are really are out of this one of these menus, each one individually. And, uh, uh, and, and that's a piece of code that's relatively easy to write and know that it's working correctly. It's not arbitrary, you know, we can check it to that. Uh, 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 the, program, the brain of the program does whatever, but it wants to talk to the world, it has to go to the communicator. This is what it, it checks that all the packets going out uh, of a certain, uh, uh, one of a certain menu. And the other thing that it does also records all the communication in the mouth, it actually knows everything that's received from the network. So in particular, you can actually check the thing that all the point of a piece of file actually, you know, the communicator can check that, right? That's something you can check. Uh, uh, and uh, we say now that we did that, we don't care what the core does. We do whatever thing, we don't have to prove anything about it. The only thing that we have to prove is the core doesn't kind of jailbreak, try to go get around the communicator to communicate to the outside world, which is also not a trivial thing to do because uh, there are all kinds of ways to get around the uh, uh, communication. But here we didn't try to do it very fancy. We said, look, let's do something simple. Let's just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're going to do the trick, the, uh, uh, the program of the Python program. And we just check that the program doesn't uh, make any one of those forbidden uh, calls, and the only call it makes to communicate is to communicate. Uh, uh, so we just uh, did again try to do something with the monitoring that you can do uh, in foreign technology in general. So what we did is just check those programs, those function calls do not exist. 
and, and you know, it's a very restricted subset of Python that doesn't uh, have fancy ways to get around. Uh, and and uh, so, so is this full proof? No. But uh, uh, is, does this raise the bar for law enforcement to cheat? Yes. Because now in law enforcement wants to really cheat and really uh, get around, it has to kind of premeditate a, a, a plan and write something that uh, maliciously does something underhand, uh, which is very different, right? So, so again, you have to remember the adversary here is law enforcement, not an arbitrary uh, standard. Uh, um, so, so, so this is essentially what we're doing. So we'll be checking that uh, it's, it's, it's a two-part problem. And uh, we're checking that all the uh, uh, interface goes through the communicator and the core doesn't try to jig. Um, again, is it foolproof? No, but is it uh, good enough for law enforcement? Yes. Uh, uh, um, so anyway, so this is, the, this is what we said. Uh, 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 so the communicator is for it and, uh, 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 and they check, uh, program, uh, check the, uh, what we said the claims. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 does it you know via text posting on the source code uh, uh, and and and, uh, and 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 I argue that uh, this the checks actually you know modular the issue that the the, the problem doesn't try to uh, uh, jailbreak uh, in, in a surreptitious way it actually answers the two technical questions that were raised in those cases. Uh, 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 and uh, typically, if law enforcement would do that, you know, uh, 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 in, theoretically, uh, and I did the answer and the case could have gone through without any uh, issue. Um, anyway, okay, so, so it's, as I said, it's not foolproof, it's not, it's not sandboxing. It's also not doing many other things, right? Uh, 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 um, you know, maybe I say, it, maybe the down is a good time, time to say it, you know. Also, this thing doesn't prove that the uh, uh, the program the law enforcement used on that particular day is really the program that they shot, right? Uh, 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 but you know, this has never been you know this has never been, it was raised and it's never an issue. It's also you know you trust law enforcement to not be completely malicious, right? And law enforcement give you uh, put a gun. This so this is the gun that was used in, you know in the uh, uh, in the crime scene. You know you trust it to have you know chain of custody as well. So so it's the same thing here. Right? Uh, although you could potentially try to make more and more proof in like technological advancement actually they reduce the trust in law enforcement, but also this already this does something new. Um, anyway, so so and then we implemented this with this uh, language this is out there is called Cairo. I don't think it's interesting for this uh, talk given out of the network implementation, but the thing is there is a tool out there uh, uh, that allows us to implement. The, the actual implementation, so we wrote, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 like a simulated uh, uh, version of a peer to peer network, and uh, we modified it according to uh, to do something like law enforcement would have done. Uh, 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 and we actually converted the text to Cairo, and the whole thing of working how to make things work in Cairo, which is not trivial, but was done. And, and then there was a proof, and it actually worked. So the only still around the end is that currently the current offering of Cairo is not so knowledge, but it can be on paper and you know, and Judy is uh, nodding and smiling, you know, painfully, and Judy is Judy has been you know suffering from the same issues. So uh, uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully one day we'll have something which actually zero knowledge can be used like Cairo, and we can just uh, 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 anyway. So by this is where we are today. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, so, so let me just distribute uh, something that's taking a lot, but uh, those details are less important. Uh, uh, but uh, just to say that we actually did it in turn. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, well, I want to say something uh, about uh, uh, just execution. So, first, okay. Oh, the. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, but, but I want to go through something a bit, then I go to question and circle, they're almost done, but I want to say something. Uh, 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 I think it's kind of a good question, important question. So, so, so there's the issue of justification, justifying uh, why what we did is enough already. So to justify, I'm sure I'm happy to answer more questions, uh, uh, that, that it's not foolproof, but it raises the baseline in terms of the I think. Uh, um, 
but, uh, but but the other point I want to ask is to, to address the issue of how for now. Okay, so we have something, and you know it's not completely uh, 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 oops, in the sense that it's not fully generic, but you know, I think by now it's clear, you know, to me, and I think to everybody who's living it that you know if somebody really wants to do it and turn on it on the real program, it can be done. Uh, 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 just too much. Uh, uh, so, but the question is like, okay, so now it's technologically feasible, but how to make it actually use, right? So, uh, um, so, so what is the current process? So, so think about, you know, in, in, in the next boot year for the next term, right? So, so let's just go over the current process for evaluating evidentiary cleavage for law enforcement. This is something I just, you know, I, I learned from Rebecca, I just like uh, discussing what we learned Rebecca, you know, maybe I misunderstood what you said, but this is my understanding. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so that's one, of the, one of the questions that uh, the judge is, is considering in this uh, doctrine, I guess, uh, it's a common law uh, uh, doctrine for, is talking about deciding about the evidentiary privilege in criminal cases. So, so first is this, of course, is the request information is material to the defense, uh, 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 of course. And then there are two other questions. So first is that can this information be obtained in alternative means without uh, not through uh, uh, asking law enforcement to disclose information that it wants, doesn't want to disclose? Uh, uh, and if yes, then of course you would opt for the alternative means. And then it would be a way to, to not to reject claims by the defense. Uh, 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 and, and another one is, the, is uh, has law enforcement made all reasonable accommodations to make the information available to the defense as possible, right? Given its constraints. And there are cases where actually, you know, the courts they found that this is not the case, you know, the law enforcement and uh, editing the file in, in a way that is uh, clearly undeductible intentionally. So the, uh, the, the court is regarded deterrently and it's like punished law enforcement. So, uh, uh, so what is being asked? And notice here, there's nothing here in this uh, questions about relative importance. You know, what's the important what's going to be on the data? How are technical questions of that process? So, uh, I, think, I think it's kind of acknowledged the fact that courts don't always have the capacity to, you know, uh, uh, to evaluate the, uh, the one harm apples and oranges. You know, that. So, uh, uh, so how should this process change in light of this technology of security of zero knowledge? Right, so, so but what we're saying is if law enforcement is actually using zero knowledge, then nothing should change in the legal structure. And you're gonna apply, uh, you just uh, apply the same process, uh, uh, but you just with a new fact about, you know, about what is the video, the, the, the check programs, what should be disclosed, what should not be disclosed, and try to do things this way. Uh, uh, but basically what happens if law enforcement is using, not using zero knowledge, right? So in the next case, and you know it's clear that zero knowledge was could have been used and it would have been uh, would have been effective, but law enforcement was not effective. How how can you think about this case? And uh, uh, and the suggestion is that actually we should actually consider it as a violation of of security that law enforcement did not do an overreaching accommodation. And that would be a hope for courts to actually react to that enforcement. So just the fact that if they're feasible, should somehow tie the hands of law enforcement to, to use them because of uh, those principles. So I know how radical and not radical this is, you know, for computer science, this is like, of course, but uh, I understand that uh, in law it's different. So, yeah. Okay, so one um, interesting point is you, the way you frame the uh, question is that uh, you know, Right. 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 Okay. If they feel that you know, you know, could you make the account and could you make the argument that like have, not having earlier written software is is a process that is basically like unreasonable, right? Or, or, okay. Otherwise, you can create this incentive where they would like. Make the software business team so that they can claim that they can disclose it. Right. Yeah. So, so that, yeah. I'm trying to find the chat, but I somehow can't uh, open chat. Yeah. 
no, no, but yeah, but no, but I'm not. Something I'm not just. No, 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 no. Supplement that. It seems to have more grounding in the spaces as well. Proper programs that will be used repeatedly, right? That that where um, they're thinking ex ante about building the programs in a way that's compatible with this. But, but if you do it once, like in procurement time, so you know, so if the software I'm using for many cases, it's going to be, yeah. yeah. But, but I think we're already doing it in many other things. Like, you know, we're running software, you know, with comments and, and with, uh, in, in, in an easy to understand language. Uh, we, we're doing all kinds of accommodations to make things uh, uh, available already. So it's, we just didn't get another level of accommodation. Yeah, I mean, we're thinking about the issues, the cases, thinking about the other things, if these LD tools are very specialized, then the lawyers will love the adversarial proceeding. Uh, they'll say that the violation of my due process is kind of idiosyncratic. I need my defense to get in there and look at it. And uh, if we have tools that we can use repeatedly to move this out of court completely and have some kind of administrative agent. That would sign off and say, Yes, this is an acceptable breathalyzer. You know, because this mm -hmm. breathalyzer always measures the right level of alcohol. Mm -hmm. One of the weird right. conditions. You know, it just seems so weird that early on, a few defense lawyers are going to challenge breathalyzers to figure out which ones work, which don't, and that's going to be good in the future. That's a weird way to do it rather than having an agency. But if the law enforcement tool is really idiosyncratic, then we really do need to do this in the adversarial sense on a case by case basis. I agree. It's, it's, it's probably complementary, right? So, so in some sense, uh, due process rights are due process rights. It cannot be mitigated by agency, but maybe it'll be simpler because these agencies have the due process rights. You know, you have to satisfy them, but it will be easier to satisfy them just because most of the cases will be. Yeah. I was supposing to, if we're yeah. the government, you know, we don't really want some agency to be signing off on the tool. So, my proposal only works if you have some level of trust in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but also there's, yeah, there's always this issue with you know, our governments. So, so is it, it, it goes back to this question, you know, to what level do you have to is it protect the software from, you know, side channels and stuff. So, so it's not that, you know, one thing is the entire government is one united adversary that's malicious. And another thing is that, you know, you know the government is to be worse, but they are certain, you know, Individuals that not always do the best thing, or make things are easy for them, or whatever stuff. But that's a different uh, uh, sort of uh, adversarial system. But, uh, anyway, but it's not uh, by now. No, but, yeah, no, no. Uh, um, but but it's a question because you no, know, the the uh, it seems to be a challenge. So, so just to say, can off the record, so it should be quite But uh, uh, you know. It, you know we did try to 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 uh, approach law enforcement with this, and we didn't get much uh, 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 response. So, so, so. In other setting, yeah. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, I mean, the 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 the, 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 the contrast is really there. But like this judge is saying, you know, what am I supposed to do? This is right. This is right. Yeah. What should I do? Yeah. Yeah. So this guy walked off. 
You know, if I were the the only calculation I'd be doing, it's like, all right, well, how many people? Have no, but, but, yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but the point is that it's too much. Yeah, one of the numbers is really similar. They might have been in jail for a year. Right, exactly. They're not even exactly in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. so it's but like the, the, the cost calculus as, as perceived by the prosecutor, uh, by the prosecutor or law enforcement agency may be very different. Um, but, but I think the, the, the cost here is the social cost, title cost, because yeah. you know, because uh, there's a distrust in the system. So, so there's all these uh, human rights agencies that actually work against law enforcement, trying to you know writing letters to the you know Department of Justice, doing those that. But yeah, these are agencies that would normally want to protect human rights. Right? Those things are pretty important. I'm really a little bit because you have to win those cases. But what happens in those videos and pictures? <laughs> you don't want to know. Right, so, so it's really that stuff. Right? I guess I'll follow up. Yeah. You know, so it, it feels like you know, law enforcement is actually going to be like a much harder place to go mm -hmm. for all these reasons than, uh, you know, these, these IT right. issues. Yeah. Right? Like the ones with the, the, the lobbying department. That, that you very right here. And maybe, you know, once it's in once zero knowledge is kind of ubiquitous. So I'm like, I'm waiting for the day that there is a, you know, zero knowledge service there that you, whenever you want to do some proof statements, you just, you know, you, you know, you use this website and you generate this proof and you send it and people verify it and stuff. And it's ubiquitous and just people does the time. You know, it's going to be like Zoom. Once it's there, you will not know how we, it, you know, there is a bit of it. Right? And then law enforcement will have to do it, right? And then it's going to be different. Maybe. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know.